Good morning. Is this on? This is not on. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Well, it says it's on. Okay. Da, 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 da. I'm not a dancer. <laughs> not at all. Well, we got a real pillow here. Chris, good to see you. There is, in case the foot needs to be elevated, there is a little stool, footstool over here too. So, yes, and we we got it. we're going to bring in the recliner next. Do you want the stool to keep your leg up? You just move around. You move around and be comfortable. That's what it's about. We, I think a lot of us here know what it is to, we have to have something elevated and, ooh, and ice, there's ice packs, We've got, we're set. We are set, it could be like a trauma unit here. Well, blessings to all of you. It is the Ascension of the Lord Sunday, which means that next week is also a big Sunday, Pentecost. And today we remember that as Jesus is lifted up, the disciples are thinking, I didn't know he was filled with helium. You know, <laughs> but he's lifted up in the glory of God, not as someone, as some people might say, oh, he, you know, his mission was a failed mission, which was thought by many at the time, but it was right that he ascend in glory to be with his heavenly father, where he is seated at the right hand of God, where his mission comes to fulfillment and then is given and gifted to all of God's people, the entire world. So we worship the Lord today in his ascension. But we also want to say a special blessing to mothers out there and to those who love with maternal love, whether you are a biological mother, a foster mother, whatever it might be, because at all different times, women of all different generations throughout our world love with maternal love and rise to the occasion with maternal um, resistance and resilience, right? I mean, that's, sometimes that's what it is. So we give thanks for mothers today. In our, it's Mother's Day, Henry. Did you tell Mama ha Happy Mother's Day? Okay. I was telling yesterday, Lila was helping us work outside. Um, we had a crew here taking apart garden beds and leveling soil. And I asked if Lila and, and Ryan and Lisa and Grace, if, if they've ever done like breakfast in bed for their mom. And she said, oh, kind of, you know, just, oh, this is something we could do. And I just reminded her that it can get messy because I spilled, when I was about her age, five years old or so, I spilled orange juice all over my mom's bed. <sighs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> and she was the one who had to clean it up. So, yes, mothers, thank you. Our scripture reading today is from Acts 1. What are we about to hear? Just before Jesus ascends to be with his Father, Jesus commissions his followers to take the good news into all the world. The Holy Spirit empowers Jesus' followers to continue this work today. The reading begins. In the first book, Luke's Gospel, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Before we continue, I want to see if we can give a gift or two to some of the children today. Because Henry and Owen, I know that we, I, I just, you're kind of new here and it's kind of exciting and we're getting to know you and learn you and learn about you as you learn about us. And so I have a Bible that's wrapped in this fun paper. And I thought I saw maybe, Tim and Abby, come forward. I thought I saw you sneak in and I thought, oh no, they disappeared. <laughs> Toys. Hi, Abby. Hi, Tim. How are you doing today? Well, I have a gift for you, too. Yeah. And, and it's kind of cool. You guys can share that and this one, too. And, of course, their Bibles. <laughs> their Bibles. And what I really like to do, too, with the kids is, is to we read them, and especially at bedtime or other times of the day, too. And we've got a whole bunch of different Bibles. So as you guys grow up, you're not going to just have a children's Bible like when you're 16. You'll get some other ones, too. So you are welcome. Thank you, Abby. Glad to see you today. Yeah. Excellent. And speaking of books, remember this book? We started this last week or a couple weeks ago. Oh, and I got a picture of Jesus here. And he's got a heart. Do you, is there only Jesus in this book? Do you see other pictures in, on here? Do you see other people? I see a person listening to Jesus. It's a really cool story. When Jesus grew up, Jesus went to a mountain where there were many people. And they came to hear him. And he taught the people to love and not judge each other. To treat one another as we would want to be treated. Jesus taught us to even love our enemies. See, that's Jesus with a heart. And Jesus came to show a different kind of power to the world. The power of love, right? That's a great song, too. Everything that Jesus taught turned the world upside down. And instead of the rich, the poor were even loved, and especially loved by God. Instead of priests, it was the misfits that God especially loved. Instead of powerful rulers and soldiers, it was the people trying to be free who God especially loved. Jesus offered special love for those who the rest of the world showed and shoved to the side, the poor, the sick, and the friendless. What do you think's happening in this picture? There's Jesus, and what's he doing here? What do you think? Yeah, he's helping the person who looks like they may have fallen or had surgery or something. <laughs> Not that we all know about that, right? And everybody else, look at that, Eric. Is everybody so happy about that, isn't it, Brad? It's a great picture. And I like how it shows a lot of movement, too, because Jesus is always on the move. Some people color like that, Kurt. A lot of scribbles, right? But then we remember that Jesus turns the world right side up and helps everyone. We're going to get to this story next week as well, right, Chris? Right? And we all help each other out, just like Chris is helping his mom and dad all the way from Wyoming. And sometimes we go, oh, this work is hard, but Jesus is with us. And then we get to help. We get to help each other. Isn't that great? Look at that picture. All right. Everybody can repeat after me. Want to fold our hands, Henry? There we go. Jesus, thank you for turning the world right side up. 
Thank you for your love. And help us to always be loving. Amen. 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 The gospel for this Ascension Sunday, it's from Luke, actually, 24, not John. Luke 24. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the 11 followers, those were who were with him, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And Jesus said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all of the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I'm sending upon you what my Father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. We're waiting for Pentecost. That's what he's talking about, from the Spirit coming. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while Jesus was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And his followers worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So it was several years ago that my godson, about 17 years old, called me. He was in a confirmation class, was wrapping up, and the kids had a big assignment. And my godson was pretty stressed out because their priest gave the, the whole class an assignment to interpret a scripture. And then they'd have to say something about that to the class or perhaps what my godson was worried about like during the confirmation service. And it was a tough parable. And I thought, well, maybe he gave the assignment to the kids because he didn't know what to say. <laughs> so he wanted to see what the kids would say. So actually, on the phone, what happened was my godson Bryce and I, for I don't even know how long, it probably wasn't as long as it seemed, but we had one of the most amazing conversations about a very, very difficult parable. It was the parable of the unforgiving servant, and maybe you know it, maybe not, but there was a landowner that had several servants to help with the land, and the servants all had some debt. And so the landowner, in a spirit of graciousness and gratitude and generosity, forgave all of the servants of their debt. Great news. Great news. Grace abounds. One of the servants also had his own servants, right? If you remember this. And some of his servants owed him some money and he refused to be merciful. He did not forgive their debt. The original landowner learned about this and his servant's unforgiving heart. He chastised that servant and said, shame on you basically, and sent him to prison until that servant was able to pay back the debt. So he retracted his graciousness and said, no, now you owe me. This is from Matthew 18, and Jesus is speaking, and what confounded my godson was, as Jesus said, so also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Well, what do you do with these difficult teachings? My godson didn't like that the Jesus that he knew about, loving and gracious and merciful and forgiving, seemed to retract that mercy. It seemed like it was conditional. But this conversation that we had 
was quite amazing. Yes, Jesus was saying something very hard. I think when pure love comes into our world, it disrupts things. As we learned in the children's story, it turns the world right side up. But a lot of times, we in the world, or the world as it is, and the nations and people don't want to be turned right side up. We'd rather give in to our own devices, have people pay us back as they were supposed to. But what we learned in our conversation was that God's love remains. And that when we don't live into God's graciousness, and when we don't share that, when we're not loving, when we aren't gracious and merciful, when we withhold forgiveness, it breaks Jesus' heart. It breaks God's heart. Because God loves us so much and his will for us is to love each other, forgive each other. As Jesus said here, from your heart, not just an idle word, yeah, you're forgiven. Like, remember the kids when, when little brothers, sisters get in an argument, right on cue, and mom or dad says, go forgive your brother. They go, oh, I'm sorry, I forgive you. And then they say, what? No. You gotta mean it. Jesus wants us to mean it. So sometimes those parables, as my godson Bryce and I were saying, sometimes they're tough, but they're said from a point of love in Jesus' heart, the will of God, which is to love the world, to also align our hearts with God's heart because God knows we can, because Jesus has done it for us. And in his glory, as they watch him ascend into heaven, perhaps they get it. Jesus wasn't just ascending to escape the world, but because the Spirit would be given to us to be empowered to love. That it wasn't just Jesus walking the earth, but the Spirit let loose in the earth. Now I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm starting to preach Pentecost. <laughs> but it was right that Jesus ended his whole mission in life by ascending to be with his heavenly father. And as they were standing there, the followers looking up, these two messengers, as we heard from the reading in Acts, as Melissa read, took their eyes, took their focus and said, no, you're looking in the wrong direction. Look to each other. Look to the nations. We got work to do. We got love to share. We got a lot of stuff to do. And though Jesus isn't here, just wait, just wait. So what I was doing and what Bryce was doing in our conversation is we were reading between the lines. We were dwelling in the word. And that's something that many of us here know about. A lot of faith denominations and traditions. We dwell in the word together. We get in the middle of some of these difficult things and we say, what is it? What do we notice about this text? What do we wonder? And what might the spirit or what might Jesus be nudging us to do, to be or to learn from? Several years ago, our council and some other Kingo folks, and we, we started dwelling in the word with the same scripture passage. The same scripture passage for how long? Do any of you remember? Six months, some of us a year, the same one. Every time we met, we'd read it. And in the beginning, people were thinking, oh, we're going to read this month after month after month. I mean, what do you think? Doesn't that sound a little ridiculous? We got the whole Bible. Why are we reading the same scripture passage, right? Month after month. The most amazing thing happened. And it reminded me of my conversation with my godson. Every time we read, the Spirit nudged us in a different way. And we heard things differently. It was pretty cool, Henry. It's like reading the same amazing story, the same favorite book at night that mom or dad reads to you, and you hear things differently. And then you know when they skip things, too. You go, oh, you skipped a page. If we skipped a verse, people would know, right? Thank you, Henry. It's the same with the Bible and reading that together. 
it wasn't just one person reading it or the pastor saying, this is what it means, but we discerned the spirit together. Jesus ascends, our buddy Jesus, right? And he says, I am with you in the word when you dwell together, when you go out into the community and apply what you're learning. It is such a joyful thing to do. It makes you want to pull up a chair, just sit down and hear more and more. We worked on this. We worked on this today. But it's true. Jesus is filled with stories. And they're in that Bible, that gift that we gave you. They're in our Bibles at home. And when we listen together, when we read together, I tell you, Jesus shows up. What do you think about that, Henry? It's good. It's very good. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church, ministers of word and sacrament, and diaconia, ministers of service. Empower us with your witnesses through the earth, through means of grace, compassion, and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray that storms and tornadoes will relent, accompany relief efforts to clean up damage, and comfort those in grief. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations. Lead all who govern to seek equity for those most in need. Bring peace on earth, in our homes and in our hearts. Mend tensions between college students and administrators over the war in Gaza and mounting anti-Semitism, hate, fear, and violence. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from individual and institutionalized racism especially as white Christian nationalism threatens our democracy. Raise up in us your truth, Lord, that leads to freedom for the oppressed. Teach us to love our neighbors and enemies as ourselves. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, our good shepherd, comfort the sick, those who mourn, and those nearing death. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heavenly Mother, bless all who share maternal love across the generations. Strengthen mothers who sacrifice much for the well-being of their families. Console those for whom this day is difficult, and gather us all under the care of your loving wings. God of grace, hear our prayer. We are grateful for all the faithful departed who now rest in you, O Lord. Unite us in faith with all the saints. God of grace, Hear our prayer. For what else do we pray this morning? You may name those out loud or keep them in the silence of your hearts. We pray gratitude for all the volunteers in this congregation, for members and friends and guests who serve you, Lord, and serve this community by caring for each other and this property that is a beacon of hope to this world and this community and neighborhood. God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your arms, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you all. Let's take a moment and share that peace with those around us.